Hello and happy Friday. Hope you guys are doing well. This is Fluke Fridays, episode number maybe 54. I'm not sure. You'll have to look in the description to see if I got that right or not. Um, and today what we're going to be talking about is the most common pressure calibrator on the planet. The old pressure gauge and a hand pump. So we're going to just talk about that, highlight that, also go over some question and answers from you guys. So uh, I'll do the first question right now just because it's good intro. It says from uh, Ar Arash Zegger, a very common commenter. Thank you for that. He says, hi engineer, this week you forgot to upload a new video. This was as of four days ago. And yes, I did. Well, I didn't really forget. I chose not to because I was on vacation with my family in Alabama at the beach. So that was really nice. Um, we are waiting for your videos. What happened? So that is exactly what happened. I took a vacation last week and I decided instead of recording videos in advance or recording one on the beach, um, I decided that I'd just skip a week. So that's why you missed a week from me. Anyways, we're going to be back at it this week, right? So here we go. So pressure gauges. You know, a lot of people don't think of flute for pressure gauges. And I think I actually did something uh, a video a long time ago on pressure gauges. I don't know. It's probably in one of my playlists. But if you're not familiar that Fluke has pressure gauges, we do. The There's yellow ones that are wrapped in yellow. And those are more for the industrial maintenance guys, the people that are in process manufacturing, going out in the field and doing your pressure calibrations. Obviously, you could just tee this into anywhere. It's going to be four times more um, accurate than most of your rose mount gauges and stuff out there that you need to calibrate. So it's perfect for that. You can, if you want to simulate pressure, not just do a side by side comparison, then you bring along a pressure pump, connect with hoses and fittings, pump it up and get up to what you want. Um, I will turn it on for you and kind of show you the backlit screen here in a second. Just know that this yellow wrapped one, this is for more of that industrial customer and they are highly accurate, but then we also have an even more accurate version uh, or Fluke does in the Fluke calibration side. So if you need even higher accuracy than the yellow ones, then check out the gray ones on the Fluke Cal website um, for even higher accuracy. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that today um, here is the backlit screen. You can kind of see it's blue. Let's see if I can turn it on and off. Yeah, there you go. I'll turn my overhead light on off and see if you can see it more. Ooh, look at that. Nice blue color. And you can do a whole bunch of different pressure uh, units and different things. So it's got recording capability too and a computer access panel behind this rubber boot um, if you want that. So, anyways, kind of got dirty sitting on my desk. Okay, and we already did question one. So let's jump into Q&A and we'll talk about question number two. This comes from Awesome Electrical Engineer. Again, this in this past week. Hi, where can I get one of those Fluke Power Quality demo boards and what would be the cost? I'm based in the UK, thanks. So I'm based in the US, uh, in Ohio. Cincinnati. So I don't know for sure, but I believe this is going to be the same item number no matter where you are in the in the world. Uh, I did do some Googling and found a couple websites, one in Australia, maybe one that was in Europe, I'm not sure. But here is the item number if you want it. It is item number 4483703. Again, 448 3703. And what we're talking about there with the power quality demo cases, I've done several videos where I'm showing three phase power quality, either with one of my power quality units or with um, like the Fluke Connect system where you have different modules. And this demo case, you can plug it into an outlet and from there you can choose whether you want it to be 50 hertz or 60 hertz and then it will produce from a single phase, it will give you three phases and give you little current loops that you can loop around and little voltage probes so you can do voltage and current on all three phases in a classroom type setting. 
So there are customers that are at that have asked for this before that they want to use this for training purposes. They want to be able to bring three phase into a uh, into a classroom setting. And this is a great way to do that. They're not cheap. Um, you and you, I'm not going to give you price because I don't know what it is in the UK. So you're going to have to look individually. Either uh, you can probably call Fluke Parts and see if they'll sell it to you, but most likely you're going to want to go through a distributor and just give them that part number that we talked about. So I hope that's helpful, and if, if you're somebody that wants one and you, you get hung up on it, uh, let us know below, but uh, that item number should get you pointed in the right direction. You might need to go to your local uh, Fluke website, depending on what country you're in, and go from it from there, just at request a demo or request a salesperson or something, give them that part number and tell them that's what you want, and they should probably be able to point you in the right direction. Okay, question number three. Trevor Allsop, it says... When in ohms, does it display results in one or two decimal places like the insulation resistance tester? So this is speaking to the 1587, F yeah, 1587 FC insulation tester. In the ohm setting, are we getting one or two decimal places? It's a great question. I forgot to grab mine, so I'm going to go grab it. I'll be right back and we'll finish this video. Okay, there and back again, like Bilbo Baggins. So I got my 1587FC right here. We're gonna turn it on and see if it's one or two decimal points in the ohm reading. I just have it shorted out so we can see. Whoops. And you can see it is one decimal point. So a tenth of an ohm is what you're gonna be seeing. Let's hit the range and see if we can change that at all. Nope. Yep, so only one decimal point. All these are kilo ohms, mega ohms. Without a kilo or mega, you only see one decimal point. So hopefully that answers your question, Trevor. And let's see, another question from Thomas Vinovic. Um, I probably butchered that. Sorry, a little dyslexia on me. It says, I've recently purchased an 87.5 and a 325 clamp meter. The leads on both were replaced with TL1, uh, were replaced with TL175s. The silicone sheath is so much more flexible and unravel with, when taken out of storage. The Standard leads are okay, but I found, uh, but found myself toppling the meter off when when it's standing and trying to manipulate the probes on the job. Okay, so what he's talking about, what Thomas is talking about here, is the uh, the test leads, the twist leads that I've done videos on in the past. The they're more of a premium lead, so the the silicone lead itself is much more flexible. And what he's talking about is. You know, the standard leads, like a TL-75, although they're okay, they, they do have a, a more stiff lead, so the wires don't unfold as easy, and he's found himself knocking his meter over. And that's that's a great example of somebody who understand or has actually got a set of these leads in their hands, and they're understanding it, they really do make a big difference, especially if you're in a cold environment. You'll see those, uh, the standard test leads, they just won't, un they're like a, accordion right you, you have to really stretch them out before they'll straighten up for you whereas the the silicone ones the tl 175s or the premium test leads the the sure grips uh series of test leads from fluke they will just unravel completely uh really easy they don't get as knotted and uh, you can do that or and like one of my uh co-workers likes to do you can daisy chain them too if you don't if you think they're going to get too tangled you can daisy chain them more uh, flexible leads a lot easier than you can let's say the uh, the TL 75s so thanks for that question Thomas and then last but not least for the day mm, Rogerio, Rogerio Mello it says hi Brandon congratulations on the great tutorial thank you very much um, 
do you know if it is necessary? So the, the video that he's commenting on is a video on the Flute Connect modules, the IND um, 3000 kit, uh, where you have individual modules that do current only, AC current only, AC voltage only, but you can connect them all and do logging that way. And so I, I have a video that says like the cheapest way to log three phase or something. And it says, hi Brandon, congratulations, great tutorial. Do you know if it is necessary to have condition monitoring subscription to be able to perform the this three phase measurement? And I do know the answer. So the question is, on the Flute Connect app, with uh, if you get in the Flute Connect tools, you'll see, and you download the app, you'll see when you log in, there's a part that's called Flute Connect Assets or Condition Monitoring, and Flute charges for that. So he's going to say, do I have to have that subscription to be able to log? And the answer is no, you don't. Um, there are certain tools that you do, like the uh, 3540 FC and some of the fixed mounted vibration monitors, uh, you have to have that condition monitoring subscription. But for the Fluke Connect industrial kit, the 3000 I, uh, FLK 3000 IND kit, um, that kit or any of those modules in that 3000 series they can all have they all have internal memory and you can log all three phases voltage and current you can see them on your phone at the same time you can download them on your phone get them in an excel file so you can do all of that and that is uh, just complimentary you paid for it up front when you bought the meters it's not uh, additional subscription you're paying for so hopefully that answers your question Rogerio, Rogerio I think is how you say it I'm probably saying it wrong. It's probably from not Ohio. Um, but let me know if there's any other questions below. I really enjoy uh, doing these questions. I feel like I'm getting to connect with you viewers a little more. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. It, when you guys have questions, I'm sure other people do too. So ask those questions below and I'll get to them next week. Um, is there anything else? Hit subscribe, like if you like it, and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.